Hi there, I'm Anna and this is the book Dreamer's Alley and today we're going to talk about culty season already. I got this idea from Catherine, Catherine Reads. Uh, by the way, every day I'll be linking Haley down below. Haley is the creator of Bookmas. Some of the ideas come from her. The small booktuber tag, as I said, was a tag from Helen from Helen's Book Haven. And the Polarthon uh, vlog was because I participated in it and I thought it was perfect a perfect theme to start my Bookmas. But this one uh, was given to me by Catherine. Now, book number one is a wedding in December. I This was the first Christmassy book I read in ages. It was recommended to me by my friend Peppy from June Ritz and I'll link her bookstagram down below. She has a bookstagram and it is by Sarah Morgan. This is a contemporary romance but uh, I don't like enemies to lovers that much, but this one was special. I mean, trust me, the, I listened to it in a, on audiobook. The narrator was incredible. The writing style was perfect for me. It's a cozy read uh, it, that includes cultural exchange, Christmas celebrations. I mean, it's a very, very beautiful book. I highly recommend it if you like contemporary. And if you don't, maybe it's a good thing. I mean, it got me into contemporary, so who knows? Book number two is a non-fiction, The Little Book of Hugo. Uh, this is, uh, it's a Danish Secrets to Happy Living. It is about, uh, about Danish traditions. And Hugo is, uh, game. It's talking about the key to happiness, what you should do to um, be happier in life. Uh, for example, in the key to happiness here, before it starts, says, I have the best job in the world. I study what makes people happy. At the Happiness Research Institute, which is an independent think tank uh, focusing on well-being, happiness and quality of life, we explore the causes and effects of human happiness and work towards improving the quality of life of citizens across the world. So I thought it was quite a beautiful premise. Um, it's by, I don't know how to say it, I think it's Meek Viking or Viking. Or... That's the author. Um, and I enjoyed reading it quite a lot. So I really highly recommend it. I don't want to tell you exactly what it's about, but let's say is the Danish keys to being happy. They're known to be the happiest people in the world. Uh, book number three is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Higgs. I enjoyed this quite a lot. I think it's a cozy read perfect for the season. But because this one is focused on the relationship between uh, grandson and his grandfather. And basically how the whole family saw his grandfather. Like uh, on one side it reflects on how uh, the families treat uh, those who have dementia any kind of dementia uh, because of age. And on the other side, it is a beautiful story of kind of found family and getting closer to those things that your ancestors were close to. So it's a very beautiful book about family. It's a middle grade. It's, this is the first one in a series. I don't know how many are there out there. I believe there are five. But is is uh, I found it very beautiful. It reminded me, if you've watched it, of the Big Fish, or Big Fish. I think it's Big Fish. The the film is is just uh, I, I love it so much. And uh, it looks scary, but trust me, it is not at all. Then most of the books actually now that I realize are middle grades. Then The House with Chicken Legs by Sophie Anderson. I read it recently and I thought it was one of the most beautiful middle grades I've read. It's cozy, it's uh, focused on giving proper value to your family, grandparents, 
of uh, finding family in France. It's a retelling of the Baba Yaga story, the Russian folklore story, and, and it's just is incredibly beautiful. Although I wanted to strangle the main character more than a couple of times, but I, I think it's a perfect story to read for Christmas. Next one is this manga. And, oh, sorry, used to show me the other way around. Uh, that's called My Brother's Husband. I think most of you will know about this one. It, it's uh, two tomes. I don't have the second one physically yet. That's why I'm not showing it here. But I'll get it soon because the same independent bookstore who brings books in English that I mentioned uh, yesterday brings these. So, yay! I can get the second one physically. I was dying for it. I read it in ebook, but trust me, it's not the same. I think some of you will understand. So, yeah, this is the story of Mike, uh, who is married to a Japanese guy, and his husband died, and he had promised him to go with him to Japan to meet his family and to travel because he loves uh, Japanese culture. So, because his husband dies... Then he travels to Japan and gets to uh, his uh, twin's house. This is a twin of the um, guy who died. In Japan, they're not quite open to different sexual orientations. In this case, it is Kana, the, his daughter, who teaches her father uh, through her behavior uh, what love is about and that love is acceptance and that being different is not bad at all, it's just being different. So it's a, it's a very beautiful story. I loved the first one and the second one as much. I cannot say I have a favorite one, probably the first one, but because I was getting close to the story in itself. But it's, I mean, I highly recommend this thing. It was a serious five star from me. Then book number six is uh, The Never Ending Story. This one is in Spanish here, and it's a plain cover. But let me show you some of the illustrations in it. I don't know if you can see it properly. You will know if you read it or if you have read it, why some of the text is in red and some is in green. These editions are just stunning. I mean, I, I cannot describe this. So creative. Uh, oh, oops, bookmarker. And I have actually uh, two different editions from this book uh, because I loved it, but there's uh, green and red. And this was my childhood. Uh, everybody had watched the film Everybody has watched the film except me because I read this one last year and I haven't gotten to the film yet, but I've heard there's a moment that's too heartbreaking in the film, not in the book. This book is totally worth it. It's also a middle grade and it's an adventure story in which there are magical beings. Basically, it's one of these stories that's a book about books. Uh, you get um, the reader got into the story and traveled through it and met the characters and uh, as I said, magical beings. I mean, this is this is Michael Ende. This is a translated work. It was originally written in German, but this is so special. I cannot tell you enough times. So trust me, you must read this one. It's cozy because, again, you get into a bookstore, you get within a book, and we all love that. So yeah. Then, <laughs> book number seven is Tilly and the Book Wanderers does uh, the first one in the Pages and Co series by Anna James. It's also a middle grade and it is amazing. It's all, again a book about books and it's a story in which Tilly is an orphan. She doesn't have her parents because her mom disappeared and her father died and uh, she lives with her grandparents who have a bookstore. They have a very special ability and it is to get into relatively close relationships with book characters. How? You'll have to read it to discover it, but I don't know anybody who has stated that they 
didn't like this book. This is my favorite middle grade of all time. I'll talk about it in depth in the um, top 10 books of the year, but this is amazing. I mean, that book, ah, I, I cannot do anything but sigh. It, this is just... Tilly, such a likable character, so Grant Pines too. There's an, an interesting villain, and uh, it's just it's just perfect. Book number eight is La Sombra del Viento, The Shadow of the Wind, but by Carlos Ruiz Zafón. He's a Spanish writer who died, actually this year, from colon cancer. And um, that was a that was very sad news. I cried. It was hard for me, shocking for me to discover. And this is the first one in a series of four books. First one is the Shadow of the Wind. The second one is the well, I forgot the name of the second one. The uh, Angels Game, or I think it's the Angels Game. Uh, third one is the Prisoner of Heaven. And the fourth one is the Labyrinth of the Spirits. And I haven't finished the fourth one yet because I decided I needed to reread the whole series. And yes, I did. Uh, it's, uh, it has perfect writing style, not too flowery, but not too simple. Describes everything. It's humorous magical it has an amazing atmosphere it's just the story is incredible it's basically a mystery about uh, uh, several generations within the same family this one is about one specific generation the way he links the books oh my gosh i cannot talk about that enough the way he links the books is incredible. And you don't see the link between the books until you get to the end of the second one and you start like going crazy. It's, it's just, it's perfect. Um, I love this story so, so much. The main character is Daniel, uh, who finds a book in a very special place that's called the Cemetery of Forgotten Books. And uh, actually his family owns a bookstore too. And um, he um, starts an investigation to find out more about the author of the book, but then gets involved in so many problems, but all of them worth it to find out about the story. Like, I cried first time, I cried second time. I laughed first time, I laughed second time I read it. I mean, I, I cannot recommend it enough. This is one of my favorite of all time. And the environment, the atmosphere is so cozy. And it's all about family and life. And, and uh, also the sadness you get when, when those you love treat you wrongly. But it's, it's, it's a beautiful story. I highly recommend it for the season. Then book number nine is Nevermore, another middle grade. Oh, this one is not a middle grade, by the way. Uh, then Nevermore, The Trials of Morrigan Crow, is another middle grade. And this was recommended by Gavin uh, from How to Train Your Gavin. I'll link him down below too. He organizes the best readathon ever that's um, based on middle grade books. That is called Frostheart. Um, and, and, and trust me, that's one of the best middle grades I've ever read, but Tilly, Tilly got number one this year. Nevermore is the story of Morrigan. I think she's Morrigan. Uh, and Morrigan is a girl that's supposed to die on her 11th birthday, but then she gets saved by the bell, nearly literally, uh, at the last minute by Jupiter North. Uh, who's a funny character that has no problem telling the bad guys, uh, telling everyone the things they should know. And he's quite honest, straightforward, funny, and it gets her into a series of trials she needs to complete in order to say they're not go back and die. Adventure, whimsy, atmosphere storyline plot everything is 
beautifully made. So yeah, I highly recommend it. I find it very cozy because it's like she finds a new family in Jupiter and uh, friends she makes where he takes her. But it's like he's taking her to a parallel world in which she, she meets many great magical creatures and even flies with an umbrella. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's just stunning. It's just impossible not to like this book, I believe. Maybe I'm biased, but I love this. Then, last but not least, is Arishan, The End of Time. I read last month for Believeathon by Roshani Chokshi. Oh, uh, Nevermore, sorry, Nevermore is by Jessica Townsend. Uh, it's the first one in a series. The second one's called Wondersmith. The third one is Hollow Pox. Hollow Pox hasn't gotten to the country yet. Wondersmith either in English at least, but I can get Wondersmith in ebook, so I hope I can read it soon. Although for middle grades, I'd rather have the book. Uh, this is a great adventure middle grade based on Indian mythology. It's actually worth it because you learn a lot about a different mythology that's not presented to us regularly. And, but I found too many references to other uh, books or other stories. Uh, for example, there's a bird that constantly reminded me to Zazu. I'll link uh, the discussion down below, but I discussed this as part of a book club, the Backlist Reader Book Club uh, with Anne. So I'll see if I can link that um, so you can check what we thought about the book. But the Indian mythology is great. There are continuous funny remarks. Aru is a special character that I wasn't sure if liking or not. The thing is that she's used to lying and excusing herself of doing it because she has a great imagination. But the thing is that she's a great liar. And one day, just to uh, be able to go on with her own life, she discovers she's the daughter of a god and start an adventure to be able to save the world because she opens, basically opens the door to the world being destroyed because time will be ended. Uh, so that's her whole journey to get there until she gets to do what she's supposed to do. There are also too many remarks, but the style, if you liked Percy Jackson, you will like this one. Like, even little ones to uh, The Titan's Curse, the third one in Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Such as, like, one character having a brown and a blue eye, if you have read the other one. If not, I'm not spoiling anything. But I would recommend it because it's an opportunity to get to know a different culture through a middle grade adventure story. So, yeah, that's it for me today. I would recommend many more books. But I decided to uh, keep 10 for the moment, not to make this video far way too long. And uh, I hope I'll see you tomorrow, my bookmas. I hope you're having a beautiful month of December. I'm sorry I haven't decorated yet, but I have to re reorganize this whole house. So uh, you'll have my uh, house reorganization and uh, Christmas decoration video next week. Please let me know. <laughs> Uh, what you, which are your favorite cozy reads? So I can get a couple of recommendations. I love my recommendations. So uh, have fun. Hope you're having a beautiful month of December, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye.